Hi everyone and welcome to the Fisher Creations podcast where I pull out one of my interesting knitting projects every time and talk you through the details. I should stick to one kind of saying the sentence in my head. Well, I will not record this intro over and over again because it will just go downhill from here. So yeah, my name is Anna. You can find me on Ravelry as Obsti and you can find my designs on Ravelry as well, which are so far only free patterns. And you can find me on Instagram as Caledoniana. And I suspect many of you will have come here from Kia's Boot Podcast and Knit Along of the Free Socks Cal 2020. So welcome, welcome to our new viewers and new subscribers. It's lovely to have you here and I hope you will engage in the community and we can start really building community around this podcast because it's been so much fun to interact with you, to read your comments, so please keep them coming, please. I really, really love to hear from you and to hear your suggestions and your comments on the podcast. And speaking of which, I have switched back to the camera lens which I used when I first started recording this podcast because some of you commented it was easier to see what I was working on and what I was showing um, when I was closer to the camera. I wasn't actually closer to the camera, I was actually further away from the camera when I was using that lens, but it's it's a higher zoom, so yeah, it's quite close to get it in frame and to get any better angle I would have to pretty much move around all the furniture in my living room, which is more than I'm willing to do for the podcast. So. Please let me know if you prefer this lens or the one I used for the previous episodes where I was further back and you could see all my sofa behind me. This one also deals a little better with bad lighting, so at least for today it might be the better option because it will allow you to actually see what I'm showing. And I have ordered some kind of LED selfie lighting ring to put in front of the camera on a tripod which hopefully should arrive later this week, so it will hopefully allow me to have brighter images in the future. Um, yeah, we shall see. I hope this works for today. I'm just, I'm trying around what maybe gives you a better viewing experience. I'm still trying to learn how to use my equipment to the best of its possibilities, but still it's a 10 year old DSLR I'm using to record. It's one of the first generations able to record video, so the quality is just limited in some degree. But we, we shall see. Please let me know if you prefer the other lens or this one and how, how your viewing experience is. Because I think I might get trouble getting the whole project in view this time. So I will make sure to post pictures of the whole project on its recipient, because it was a gift, on Instagram. To see it in full, please just have a look over there. Um, there have been some pictures of it, but I will have at least one or two model pictures up and on my project page as well, if you prefer to view it there. So, just let me know which, which lens you prefer and which setup you prefer. I'm happy to switch it around, so, yeah, let, let's get to the knitting, shall we? This is today's project. It is very long, as you maybe can see, because... Uh, <clears throat> Even at the end of my arms, yeah, if I hold it at the underarm, you can actually see me below the project. So, but the interesting part is the yoke part anyway. So we shall just, just show this bit. Um, this, as you can see, is a very long, large, but rather boring at the bottom, yoke jumper. Uh, it was a belated Christmas gift for my boyfriend, although A, it's not really a Christmas gift, it's just a, well, I promised to knit you a jumper and it's Christmas, so let's just call it a gift. Um, B, we had ordered the yarn some weeks before Christmas, but I was determined to finish all my previous whips before I started this. So this actually was my New Year's cast on. I started this, this jumper on January 1st, I finished it on January Eight. So yeah, it took me exactly a week to knit this whole long thing. This is a drops pattern. I know there are some reservations against drops and while I haven't looked too far into them, I do share them. But on the other hand, patterns are really expensive. I'm on a tight budget. And also I just had my boyfriend look over 
a selection on Ravelry of all the patterns that are either free or I had in my library in one of the pattern books I own and matched the yarn weight because we had decided he should have another jumper in this yarn which I also used for his Ritterie earlier and he really likes that one. Um, if you watched the Fiber Friends Tag episode, he is wearing his Ritterie in, in that episode, so yeah. He really liked that one, it's Knit and Drops Lima. And we decided he should have another one in Drops Lima. And so I just had him look over a selection of free patterns or patterns I already owned. And this one caught his eye and he wanted it, so I obliged. Yeah, it's called, the, the pattern is called Neville, uh, some kind of number to it, but Neville, as in Neville Longbottom, I guess. But I will link it below, of course, and it's linked on my project page. Um, just a fairly simple circular yoke. Um, knit from the bottom up, I skipped the color work at the bottom of the cuff and the hem. Just because I don't really like how it fits to have color work uh, at, at your cuffs and at the hem, especially because it's also stretched out over the hips or the belly in his case, rather. <laughs> and also on this one, I, I don't really like how it looks to have color work at the at the cuffs or at the bottom hem. But yeah, I just left the sleeves plain, layered it bottom up, increased along the way. I have no idea why I need to hold it, so you can see it. Uh, second sleeve the same. Two by two ribbing as the pattern calls for at the bottom. Which is not usually my preference, but at this loose gauge it's okay. And yeah, the body is really just <laughs> an endless straight tube, because I didn't do any shaping. Um, for a man I usually do the waist a little narrower and then go outwards to accommodate broader shoulders. But then I would have to <laughs> would have had to do some belly darts. Because what he does have in the waist he also extends to the front. So I just left it plain and there's a tube and it fits in really really well. It's more than half a meter long from the bottom edge to the underarm because he is a tall guy and although he does have very long legs, he also has quite a long torso. And, yeah, he, he just likes very long jumpers, so his belly doesn't stick out. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's a very long, plain brown tube that I knitted here. And then the color work started just two rows after you joined body and sleeves. So it's a very deep color work here. I did modify this pattern a lot, as is to be expected of me, I guess. So this pattern was written for a kind of DK weight and the Lima is, is it's a strange yarn but I'd say it's rather rather worstedish weight. At least it's not a yarn I'm comfortable to knit for him specifically at a 21 stitch gauge which is what the pattern is written for because at that gauge he tends to overheat so he just wouldn't wear it as much if it had such a dense gauge, especially in this alpaca blend yarn. So what I did was um, knit at an 18 stitch gauge, which allowed me to just use the smallest size of the pattern and just to use those stitch counts to give me what is about a 107-ish hooky. Okay, come here. Centimeter bus circumference. We have a guest today. Look who decided to join us. Um, so yeah. Okay. I think this, the smallest size is actually a 90 something centimeter circumference. But by knitting it as a, at a looser gauge, I was able to just stick to that size and get a larger gauge of around 107. 108 centimeters bust circumference, which gives him the amount of positive ease he likes, which is around 5 centimeters. So what else did I do? So because I knit at a looser gauge, I wasn't happy with the amount of stitches cast on for the bottom cuff, so 
So for the bottom hem here, I just cast on the number called for. I didn't cast on the number called for, for because for some reason I do not understand, drops patterns always call for a larger amount of stitches for the ribbing than for the actual body or sleeve. So what I used was the stitch count you decrease to after you finished or the, uh, the pattern asks you to decrease to after the ribbing is finished. So that's what I used for, for the body, but for the sleeves this number I think would have been 56 stitches or something. And I went down to 48, which then meant I had to include more increases. So I didn't use the increase rate of the pattern. I just measured how much length I had to cover how many decreases I had to do, just divided the one number by the other and then knew how many centimeters I had in between my increases. Increase, not decrease, I'm sorry. I think it came out to about two and a half or three centimeters between the increases. He has won this one day and it's pulling like nobody's business already. But yeah, let's get to the yarn later. Um, yeah, that's why I just did, I calculated my increase rate, so I would arrive at the correct number of stitches at the top. And then I also, the pattern actually called for a few uh, short rows at the back, but I just did my own thing. I just improvised them, I think I did three or four sets of short rows that went around to the front too. So the one that went around furthest went around to somewhere here. And you can see it's quite a nice raised neck, not too much, but enough to give a very comfortable fit. And then I also decreased further down for the neck band because I was using a, large, a looser gauge and I didn't want the neck too wide. So instead of having, I think, 96 stitches with the pattern called for for the neck band, I went down to 88, which worked out well. It's, it's nice and loose. Um, most of his t-shirts shine through at the top because they have closer fitting necks. But really, he, he just needs to wear a shirt if it bothers him and it really doesn't. So, I don't mind. Um, it's, it's a nice fitting neck in itself. It just doesn't always work with all his t-shirts. But, yeah. Doesn't really matter to me. The fit of the, the hand knitted item itself is very good. And then, what I did to get a stretchy enough bind off was it's two by two rib again here at the top and the purse stitches I just bound off by per one pass one stitch over repeat and then the knit stitches I used Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off so you knit one then uh, put it put the left hand needle back into the stitch and the previous one and knit them together through the back loop so you have an extra twist of yarn that makes it more stretchy, which is the bind off that can sometimes flare out, so I don't like to use it for all the stitches. But in 2 by 2 rib, it gives a decent amount of extra stretch when you do it only in the knit stitches. So yeah, I, I quite like how it came out. It's certainly easy for him to get his head through. And he quite likes it. We were slightly... Hi, cat. Misery. Slightly disappointed by the yarn. Just because we had hoped for it to be a slightly warmer brown. Um, yeah. He shows his colors. I'm not a fan of brown yarn usually. And it's, it's quite a flat grayish color. I don't know how it comes across on camera, but that's what it is. It's alright. It looks okay on him. I don't think I could wear this color. But he's blonde, so he has a slightly different coloring. So overall, we are both quite happy with the result. It fits him really well. And he finally has a third hand and jumper to wear. As opposed to my, I don't know how many, more than 30. I guess if I did things that stay in this household, I, I'd rather knit for him. Because it took him a while to get used to wearing wool and hand knits. But now that he has. It's all he wears, both in jumpers and in socks, so actually I really need to get cracking on socks for him, because he only has three pairs. It's not really enough, even for wool, you need to wash them at some point, and he's wearing shoes all day for work, so... 
I need to knit him more socks. Which is good because I do like knitting socks and I really, really don't need any more myself. But I want to. So, yeah. This is Neville. Can you tell he likes this green? It's in his Riddaria as well. Whenever I knit him something in Drops Lima, he chooses this green as his first color and then goes from there and decides what might go well with it. It's a nice heather green. It, it is. Yeah, I, I'm holding it around a little because I have no idea what is actually in frame, but yeah. So that's it for this week's project. Um, I have started another cardigan for myself, which probably will take me a while to knit, but we will get to that. Um, what else? Let me grab a cat while I talk. So the giveaway in my group is still running. So if you would like to um, enter that giveaway, please hop on over there. I have decided to leave it open for another week just to get, give a few more people who have just recently found this podcast the chance to take part in that. And what else? Yeah. Um, from the people who already took part in the giveaway and gave me some things to talk about on the podcast, a few have requested more cat and pony content. So I thought I'd just, just because Solveig is here with me at the moment, I'd give you a bit of background about this cat. So her name is Solveig, which is a name we gave her. She is approximately 11 years old, and we have had her for more than 10. Um, when my boyfriend and I first moved in together, we had just tentatively thought about getting a cat at some point. And then just a few days after we moved, uh, a friend whose sister works at a vet, uh, at a vet office, greeted us that there was a ginger tabby cat with white um, that had been given to that vet's office because she was found somewhere. Nobody seemed to want her. She was injured. I don't know if you can see, but she has a, quite a big scar here on her nose, which is from that time. And somehow a week later we had a cat. She didn't have, really have a name at the vet's office. They called her Ginny. And we had decided previously that we would call her Solveig, after Solveig's song by Edward Grieg of the Pagan Institute. And... Kirika. Katze, no, it's not going to You have to go What else? Yeah, she was really, really unhappy and aggressive and didn't like anyone, or rather was afraid of everyone when we first got her. And it took quite a few years, I'd say about five, for her to stop attacking everyone. <laughs> Most of her friends at that time had all the cat's claws in their face at one point, because she, she just didn't know how to read the body language of a human or anyone. And because she didn't understand what people were doing, she was just terribly afraid. And she only started to calm down and become the cuddly nice cat she is now when we got Loki. Because she is very well socialized, she stayed with, a, with his family long enough, and he just taught her everything she needed to know. So yeah, by now she's a very, very friendly and cuddly cat, but she doesn't know how to retract her claws, <laughs> which sometimes can be rather annoying because she will, she will inevitably scratch you at, th at some point. <laughs> or just be stuck in your knitwear. Cats and this. Yeah. She has enough fur for three cats. So she's shedding like nobody's business. She is also the main reason we got a Roomba. Because he can take care of all the hair. So yeah. That's all the expect story. Um, if you are over on Instagram and follow me there. Have a look at my stories. Because I do share... <laughs> Quite a bit of cat content in my stories. And yeah, I guess I'll talk about Loki next time, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I'll do that. And I I will make sure to talk more about my horse at some point. But to make it more interesting, I really <laughs> want to get out a few old videos and pictures of her. Because I've known her for more than 14 years by now. 
Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry you're talking to Blake Wall. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I will just put a bit more effort into a segment on my, my horse. Loki! Geh du nicht! Geh da weg! And until then, I'm sorry for all the cat intervention here. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week with another knitting project. Until then, I would love to read your comments here on Instagram in the Ravelry group. You will find links to all those places below. And yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you soon. Bye!